The Dunning-Kruger effect is a rather interesting phenomenon. If you Google it, you will see multiple, a multitude of graphs, um, and they all look something like this. On your uh, x-axis here, we have time spent learning about something, and we have on the y-axis knowledge about something and uh, this this seems to apply to just about every trade hobby skill wh whatever it is uh, more often than not once once you know it exists it's uh, less of a problem but anyway it goes something like this Woo! where this red graph is what you think you know about the thing. And this black graph is what you actually know about the thing. The, uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is because a lot of people end up right here thinking they are right here. And I'm not just saying this to dunk on people. I know a lot of people say I, uh, I have an attitude. Um, the reason I'm saying this is because I, myself, did something here thinking I was here. And today, I am going to attempt to correct that. So, what we've got here is a Game Boy. But I'm not going to be messing with the Game Boy. Not yet. we got to build something first. Uh, I've got some unpopulated uh, PCBs that I got from uh, one of my buddies, Zekfu. Uh, he designed this board, and this is intended to be a lithium battery mod for a Game Boy Advance. Uh, now, I do have a fully populated one here. This is an older iteration uh, that does have some, some issues. Um, it does work. There's just some caveats to it. But anyway, we're going to build the upgraded version uh, that fixes those issues. Uh, I'm going to be using this for parts because there's really no big need to have the uh, old, slightly defective version when the new version should work just fine. Uh, but realistically, they're going to take the same battery. So that's pretty much all I'm going to salvage here. Um, the problem with this original version was that from a fully depleted battery, char plugging it into charge uh, would overheat the battery. And that's pretty much the only issue with it. It's it's pretty solid bit of kit otherwise. Um, throw it into your Game Boy, you've got power switch on off for the uh, module itself. We've got a switch for half amp and full amp charging. The workaround to uh, the overheating problem was just set it to half amp and leave it there, which you may notice this one doesn't even have that switch anymore. Uh, and then there's this also there's this other switch between one and two. I don't remember what it's supposed to do. Oh, looks like it's between two and three. Uh, I'm guessing that is the switch for the battery connector, uh, which. This one also only has the one battery connector and thus doesn't have that switch. We do still have the on and off switch though and that's A-OK. -okay. Um, probably looking at this going, oh well if there's no switch it must be locked to half a milliamp to charge and no actually it's um, a much more efficient chip that doesn't overheat and so one amp is fine enough for charging. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this populated. Uh, these boards came from Osh Park, which is why they have these little uh, nubbins on the end there, but I just went ahead and filed them off. And uh, let's see if I can't populate one of these boards out. Uh, so this is probably going to take a while. I'm going to apologize in advance because there are a lot of components and nearly every single one of them is different. So it's going to be a lot of digging through the bag of parts and hoping for the best. I am going to start with these two, however, because these are the only two parts I couldn't order from LCSC, and so I want to do them first and get them out of the way. Um, now, normally, 
project like this, I'd, I'd have linked in the description where you can either buy or um, you know get the source files and make your own. Uh, but this project is actually neither for sale nor is it open source, so you kind of got to know someone if you want to mess around with this thing, unfortunately. Um, I don't know what Zekfu's plans are. I know originally he had intended to sell these things, uh, but I think after getting his prototypes made, his prototypes, his, uh, well, yeah, prototypes, after having these made and realizing there was such an egregious flaw with the charge design, I think he realized, you know what, let's, let's step let's step a take back, uh, take a step back and uh, not mess around with battery stuff because batteries explode when mishandled. Um, mine hasn't exploded though, so it's probably fine. But nonetheless, what part even was that? BD48K34G. BD48K34G, that is U4. Drop that on my hot plate. Get my flux and my solder paste. You want U4, which means it goes right there. Oh, I dropped it. Set that down there. And then we'll give it a little bit more flux. And then the part will uh, jump exactly into the position it needs to be in. Flux is the uh, miracle drug. All right. Got a MOSFET BSS-119. I don't see that on the bill of materials. So it is either not for this, that is unlikely, or it is an alternate part uh, because the one I needed was out of stock. So I have no idea where it goes. It's probably that Q1 up there up by the battery connector but it could also be Q3 right in the middle so I'm just gonna save this for later I wanted to get it out of the way oh well alright next up I've got the big old bag of parts I have a lot of sorting to do I will definitely need that uh, I did also order some extra Ah, oh, excuse me, hiccups. I did also order some extra parts for uh, other shenanigans that I will have to filter out. Uh, oh, there is a part in there. Okay. Let me pause for a moment while I go sort this. Alright, so my method of attack here is to divide my parts out into one, two, three, four, five piles. Uh, I have resistors, I have capacitors, I have uh, integrated circuits like MOSFETs or battery management chips, and then everything else. And then the fifth pile is stuff that's not at all relevant to this project, uh, because when I place parts orders, I tend to order other stuff too. But that's okay. It makes the pile quite a bit smaller, but it also means I know exactly where to start. Uh, so I will start with this, a SOT 23.5 DC-DC converter, which there is only one place this can go. Uh, but let me double check anyway. U2, yep. Now, when assembling uh, PCBs and such, my go-to strategy is um, to do all of the big, no, the small parts first, 
because working around the big parts is a pain in the butt. Uh, but unfortunately, in this case, with so many different things on the bill of materials, it's more difficult to just get everything on the board. Uh, but a hot plate and solder paste make my uh, working around tall components excuse pretty pretty flimsy you certainly don't need to do that I wish the flux in this solder paste didn't burn up so quick I'm gonna periodically reflux some of these just to just to keep me from cooking the solder. Though in theory, leaving them on the hot plate like this is not the best idea. Anyway, it's what we got. My other alternative is to just paste this whole thing, place the components about where I think they need to go, and uh, then put it on the hot plate and hope for the best. But I am. Uh, terrified of doing that and then like all of the capacitors and resistors and such just like stand up <laughs> and then you don't know what goes where you won oh this one's not even on the hot part of the hot plate Ooh. That was a poor decision, but that worked out, thankfully. Let me get some flux on there. It'll probably figure itself out. Mayhaps. There's one way to clear a uh, bridge. All right. That wasn't this. Okay. This is Q2. Because I'm going to leave this thing on the hot plate for so long, I'm going to do the USB port and the battery connector and such last. down, Get some flux for encouragement. Probably have to clear that short after I get it off the hot plate. And the last one, this is not what I thought it was. Okay. I am missing U3. Oh, no, I'm not. It's just not with the rest of the components because I couldn't source that on LCSC or DigiKey. This one open. This one, however, should be Q1. That is the only. Oh, it's Q1 or Q3. Okay, that's what we're down to. EJM is 
both Q1 and Q3. Right on. All right. I need two of these. What did I say Q1 and Q3? Let's find out. Where is Q3? Oh, there it is. to get those in the right spot. Beautiful. All right, now that leaves us with this thing. Uh, and since my only remaining um, package that shape is Q4, that must be Q4. Is it end channel SOT? Yep, must be this. How convenient. Next up is Mystery Chip. So allegedly this is a better charge IC than the old one used, but unfortunately it is, despite being better and more capable, it is much more difficult to find because most people don't want to solder this kind of package. I'll just load that up with flux and paste and hope for the best, I guess. Nice. I think we're good. All right. Now I guess I'm gonna work into the other that doesn't have plastic in it. here and since I only have one bag I'm guessing this covers both inductors and the bill of materials confirms that these are some of my least favorite components to solder without a hot plate Luckily, I've got a hot plate.
Oh, that's not going down because my hot plate's only so big. There it goes. use two of these. Oh, I hope I don't get the uh, polarity wrong on these. I'm, a, I'm so forgetful when it comes to diodes. Yes, we put that line right there. Oops, there it goes. I will double check that I'm correctly. Oh, nuts. That's a good thing I bought extra. Plenty of flux. All right, now all I should have left are the connectors, capacitors, and then a couple diodes. And I will do all of that last. Uh, the diodes, I don't actually, this is the one part of the bill of materials that I did not buy. Um, I didn't care, I didn't think it would matter. I have plenty of diodes. Flux up them caps. And by flux, I mean paste. Now that's an intelligent strategy. Let's use a syringe. Clear a solder ball. Neat. All right, so I can further divide these out if I want, because there are four different types of capacitors in three different sizes, which narrows it down pretty darn easily. Uh, there's only one of this size, it's pretty easy to figure out where this one goes. I'm still double checking though, because I know how it is. I don't want to make an assumption that I have the correct part and then LCSC sent me the wrong thing or something. Six of 
three, then you get C1, C8, and C9. Fixed itself. Excellent. All right. Now I have two different 0805 sizes. I have 10 UF and 47 UF. The 47 UF ones go to C2 and C3. Hindsight, it might have been easier to clear the shorts on those components before populating this thing, but oh well, here we are. All right, and last component is 10 microfarad. I need C4, C5, and C7. I know it's process of elimination, but I don't want to skip any pads that I'm just not seeing. You know, I don't want to sit here and count and go, oh, well, there's only two pads. Must only need two caps. down to the resistors. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 left. 
maybe 15. I don't know if I counted that one. All right, right on. Um, we're gonna start with whatever this is. God, I hate when they don't label them. Okay. Uh, it's an 06, oh wait, I can. The resistor itself should be labeled. If you can read that. Uh, 39C. What in the heck? T5E. This is a 24.9K resistor. And I need exactly one for R6. Right. And instead of just putting that away, let's label that. Why don't we? What did I say it was? 24.9K. Never, never have to guess again. And of course that was R6. Just settled itself right in. That is part of the resistor network that sets the output of the uh, voltage regulator. 0805. Shocker. Once again, nothing listed. Uh, but this one is big enough to read. It says R200, which I think just means, what, 200 ohms? 20 ohms? I don't know. Let's find out. How many 0805s do I even have? One. And it's a 0.2 ohm resistor. Wow. Okay. For R10. Yeah, I'm probably never going to need these again for anything. <sighs> At least it's easy to find. There's almost no solder on that. Let's fix that. Okay, there we go. Next up, we have one million ohm. At least this one's labeled. Uh, I need three, one, seven, and fourteen.
one seven and fourteen. Well, that was a huge amount of solder on that one. There we go. Next up, 44.2. Probably only one. Also, probably part of that resistor network. Yep, there it is. Always are when you get these oddball values. Yeah, it's such a simple formula. I'm surprised there isn't a um, website for common ratios. Actually, there probably is. I should uh, look that up for resistor networks. So the idea of a resistor network Oops, that didn't work out very well, did it? Is um, you take two resistors with a known value and you can uh, shove a, um, a sensor between the two resistors And that sensor can read the voltage drop from the, this sensor would be within the regulator, of course. The sensor can read the voltage drop between those two resistors and use that to calculate um, exactly how much voltage it should be putting out. I don't know exactly how it works. It's Pretty much space magic. 1.6K. I bet that's the third one. No, oh, no, it's not. R11 and R12. Oh, these are for the LEDs. But anyway, the formula is super simple. It's it's just some algebra and cross division. Uh, well, cross multiplication to cancel out the division. Um, problem is it's very easy to calculate resistor values that don't actually exist. Uh, what did I say? R11 and R12? Yeah. So that uh, tangent I was on earlier, I was thinking, I wonder if there's a website that has common ratios already calculated for you with parts that are actually available to purchase. That is one of the hardest parts about designing a power supply. It's not, well, not to say that designing a power supply is simple. I've done several. I always hate it. There we go. Ooh, that's a lot of flux. Whoops. I'll just spread the love. And we have 330. We need one, and it is resistor number two.
doesn't say. Seven six B. Of course, there's another oddball one that I don't know the code for. O seven six K O four L. Ah, thankfully, I ordered exactly off the bone because this is a six point zero four K resistor. How many of these did I need? Just one, R13. There we go, good enough. All right, what do we got next? We're almost done, 5.1K, I bet I need two of these. Wow, shocker, R8 and R9, need two of them. These are for USB-C port to tell a Type-C host to send five volts. And it's about the only resistor in this lot that I know I have about a thousand of already, at least. Next up, second to last, we've got 2.7K. One for R5. All right, and last one by process of elimination is R3, it's 200K, and the bomb indeed says R3. Excellent. I guess I'm gonna do the LEDs, battery connector, the switch, and the uh, 
USB port. What flavor LEDs you thinking? Not those. Those will definitely not work. Those are probably pink. There we go. Let us do Let's do red for charging. That is a very common color scheme. green for charge complete. I don't know what this thing is specced for, but that sounds good enough to me. I've got some uh, other mods in mind anyhow. Oop, I don't even know where that one went. Let's get another one. There we go. Give that a minute. That'll uh, that'll take some heat to settle in. And battery connector. Sprung for the good ones. Because we could have just hardwired it.
Excellent. One more. One more and we're there. little switches which I also probably have a whole crap ton of. I love it when a plan comes together. All right, I think we're done. Just gonna give this one more squirt of fresh flux. Make sure all those joints are nice and shiny. Double check there's enough solder on these. Never soldered one of these ports by hand, or by uh, with the plate, I always do them by hand. There we go. Ah, I'm comfy with that. Now I just need to let it cool down so I can uh, clean it up. So close, so close. Okay, I'm gonna pause for a few minutes and uh, a few minutes, gonna be closer to 20. And uh, we'll check it out. Ooh, that was a close one. For those wondering, yes, I do clean it. That's just what they look like after a few uses. I don't know, there's some, there's some weird coating that uh, I guess flux gets under and then it starts bubbling and I don't know it's totally fine once it all flashes off but it never looks new again I like it cleans up and then the rest of this I think is just baked in flux because of that coating like I said I could clean it, or I could spend more time cleaning it, but I don't think I'm going to get... It's never going to be perfectly clean. I'll settle for not sticky. That's exactly what it is. Alright. I have uh, cleaned up the board. There is still a little bit of flux, especially in the um, battery connector, but... Pretty much everything else is uh, nice and clean. 
So I guess let us get on with uh, with things. And we'll double check that things aren't broken before we start plugging things in. So I'm just going to set this to continuity. There is not a dead short on the battery. There is not a dead short on the output. Let's switch it on actually. Alright. Now in voltage mode, the battery I want to use is almost fully charged at about 4.1 volts. Uh, and if we switch this on, it puts out 2.4 volts. That's bizarre. I thought it would have been more. Interesting. Oh well, nonetheless. Uh, let's unplug this. And then hopefully it's just as simple as twisting this off. But I'm starting to get the feeling that it's not going to be that simple. Oh, here we go. It's coming now. Nothing interesting on this side of the battery. Didn't expect there to be, though. Ooh, I will have to be careful. I didn't attach um, terminals to this thing yet, so I will not want to attach that there either. Let's see if it explodes, though. So it is still switched off, which means it is not outputting anything. Ooh. Try not to short the battery with your terminals. Oops. Switch it on. Battery's not instantly dropping. But there is no output. Oh, there it goes. It's just taking a minute. Maybe there's no output because there's no draw on it. Two volts doesn't seem right, but... Ooh, that's definitely not right. Oh, it's just crusty. That's unfortunate. I should have... I should have taken the time to clean this a little bit better. Um... I foresee my next purchase, an ultrasonic cleaner. I don't want to ruin my nice cable. I further trying to shove that in there. So I've got both LEDs illuminated, and it's not drawing anything, which makes me think there is a problem with my soldering. <sighs> oh, but maybe not. Maybe that's just how it works, because now it's putting out 3.35 volts. Interesting. Still putting out 3.35 volts, even though it's switched off. How very interesting. I don't know, maybe I just don't know how to use it. Then again, I thought the uh, off switch would have uh, switched it off. Oh, but maybe it's putting that out because... Oh. Oh. That's nasty. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't plug in my other cable. All right, so I've clearly got some more cleaning to do. I think I'm going to go attempt that right now. Look at how much flux was under that port.
So I believe I have determined the easy solution to this uh, clean port problem. And that is just drop on another port and don't drown the Jesus thing in flux this time. I remember thinking, probably even said it out loud, hell. Um, right when I was soldering that port, I was thinking, uh, I've never done one of these with the hot plate. I wonder how it's going to work out. Well, now I know not to do another one with a hot plate. Same thing with this battery connector. Except this one, I don't have any extras to spare, unfortunately. I know I had three in that bag, but I've also got three of these PCBs. Might have to make an exception, though. Yeah, nonetheless. I just cleaned up all the flux and now I'm trying to use my, my wick and I'm wondering why it's not working. Let me get another one of these popped on here. I'll be right back. So, I guess I'm gonna head this one off before I uh, before I let it pop up in the comments. I bet a lot of you are probably wondering why I'm even bothering to show this off, even if it's um, even if no one else can make one or buy one. And uh, ultimately it comes down to, I just, I, I, I like playing with cool stuff and putting cool stuff on the internet. And um, I think we need to see more of that. I think that it is beneficial to show people that this sort of stuff can, can be made, can be a thing. Um, there is a lot of flux on here still. Oh, it's never ending flux, man. Um, but no, it, it, it's weird. I see Zekfu especially, uh, the gentleman that designed this board. Really nice dude. Ex exceedingly patient with some people. Um, he gets a lot of this weird attitude where people think they are owed the stuff he makes. I don't understand precisely where it's coming from, and I don't understand why people, like why it's such a recurring problem. So, while I'm soldering this, for example, if I can even solder this thing, holy cow. I think I might need to use my hot plate just as a preheater. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, there are a lot of people who just think that Zekfu's designs should be open sourced and that anything else is literally malicious to the community. And it's like, Homeboy can make whatever he wants. It doesn't... You're, you're not entitled to anything he makes. Um... And that, that sort of attitude just just makes it really, really difficult to want to show off cool things. So, that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. just want to show off some cool stuff. But I don't know, I guess, 
I guess all that, and I'm just trying to say, you know, be, be, be reasonable with people on the internet. You don't, just because they showed you something neat doesn't mean it's a neat thing for you to be able to buy or for you to be able to build. It's, it's their project. They can do whatever the heck they want with it. If anything, you should take that as an invitation to make your own cool stuff. Most people take that as an invitation to just start cussing, cussing Zekfu out on the internet, though, and that's, I just, I don't, I genuinely don't get it. Alright, there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. So I guess, ow, put my thumb right on it, um, I guess let's just uh, interpret this to mean don't install this USB port with a hot plate unless you also have a um, ultrasonic to later clean it in. Keep forgetting, hot. Alright, set that aside somewhere I won't burn myself. I've made uh, I've made cool stuff literally just for myself, you know, just I wanted to make it, so I did. I will be making more cool stuff just for myself because I can. Oh my goodness. No wonder this thing got knocked off. I encourage you all to make cool stuff because you can. That is basically what this hobby is about, after all. Zekfu has decided to make this cool battery mod and, uh, Share it with me, and for that I am grateful. All right, here we go. Got it. That was a pain in the butt. It was harder to get that port swap than anything else just because I didn't have enough, I didn't have anything that could soak the heat. I had to turn my iron up and then I had to use the board preheater because this thing is just solid copper. But we're there. We're finally there. Clean that up. And I've got a port in there that's not full of flux. Cool, 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 cool. And now, ah, just 
clicks right in. That's so good. Interesting. It doesn't seem to work at all without a battery. I guess that's pretty nice. Working as intended. And then I'll charge. Oh, it's pulling nothing. Both directions, yeah. Switch it on, still nothing. Alright. I think we're ready to take this to the next step. Though again, kind of weird, not putting out the voltage I would have expected. But then again, I guess the other one wasn't either, so... Let's assemble it and see what happens. Back to old Dunning-Kruger himself. Alright, so the reason I want to do this, this is one of the... No, this isn't one of it. This is the first GBA I ever modded. Um, not the first Game Boy, just the first GBA. And uh, yeah, I, I, I threw everything at this console. I, I wanted to... Uh, I, I fell for the meme, the ultimate 2017 Game Boy Advance. I really think it's been that long. Um, and I, I've... I've added to it. I've tweaked it over the years. It's got an AGS-101 LCD. Yeah, they're not that bright. That's genuinely how bright that's supposed to be. Um, all the buttons except for the shoulder... Well, okay. D-pad and A and B are modified with clicky tactiles. Can't really hear it because of the um, buttons I have installed. I'm using little custom... 3D printed TPU adapters for the buttons onto the tack switches. Feels fantastic, by the way. Way better than originally um, without those TPU adapters. Um, we've got a animated battery gauge. You can see it's fully charged, but I, I doubt the accuracy of that. This is a pretty old battery. And we've got the coup de grace a horrifyingly basic and poorly implemented lithium battery mod. Now, I am genuinely impressed that this battery is not bloating at this point, uh, but the problem with this mod, as uh, as I alluded to with the when I was talking about this thing, there's actually a very similar issue in that this chip, this TP4050, 4056 chip, when you use it on a fully depleted battery, it puts out a lot of heat. Now, I attached this directly to the battery, so it's not like there's anything sinking the heat except for the battery. Um, I think literally my only saving grace is that there's probably like two or three cycles on this thing, and except for one of them, every single time I was just topping it up from like 70 to 80% back to 100. So in this specific case, it was probably fine because I just never played this Jesus thing. Um, however, for anyone else out there that's thinking about doing one of these battery mods, no, bad, stop it. You will kill your battery with heat, and if not, you will kill it from low, low voltage. There is literally no low voltage shutdown on this thing. I plug this into the Game Boy Advance and I leave the Game Boy Advance on, this battery will deplete down to about 2 volts before the internal uh, hard protection mechanism kicks in. Lithium batteries should not be brought down that low ever without immediately recharging them. You shouldn't, you shouldn't ever bring them below 3 volts in normal usage. Even 3 volts is low. Um, 2 volts is just ridiculous, and if you're doing that on the regular, you are going to kill your battery. Um, there's just no... That's that's what it... That's how lithium batteries work. And if you're not using the proper electronics to convert a non-lithium Game Boy 
to a lithium battery, you're gonna have a bad time. That is where this sort of stuff comes in. Now you notice I never actually attached battery terminals to this thing. That is for a reason. I plan on just soldering this into this Game Boy because this Game Boy doesn't even have battery terminals. It just has this connector. Actually, you know what we could do? I could just made up this connector to it. You know what? Let's do that. All right. I guess let's undo some of this. Uh... Hot's not. That way this thing is still hot swappable. Man, I, I had this thing planned out. I was on a roll. I made it modular like this so I can make multiple battery packs and just swap them out because at the time, and realistically, still the case, um, one of the arguments against lithium ion battery mods was that when charging, you just kind of have to leave it there. Oh, by the way, this does not support play and charge. So every time the battery's dead, you just have to leave it there and let it charge before you can touch it again. Um, I figured, oh, I'll just get ahead of that crowd and I'll make my own, you know, battery packs that I can just swap out. And then, oh, well, this is glued to a sticker that's coming off. So just peel the sticker off. Um, you know, I figured I'd just make my own battery packs and everything would be good. And then I realized how frequently I play this thing. I really don't need to make any more battery packs, do I? And so I didn't. I only ever made the one. Uh, by the way, isopropyl alcohol on, um, hot glue does break it down. I should have used more than I did, but when you've got enough on there, it starts coming off in big chunks, just like that. It's pretty good. Problem is, though, once I hit this with the soldering iron, it's just going to reconstitute. Pretty cool stuff, though. This thing has been haunting me for half a decade. And I've only recently realized how wrong I did it. But that's okay. We grow. We learn. And we do it better next time. And it is now next time, so let's do it better. Oh, I thought I had it. You know what the worst part is? I remember I attached this thing to the battery before I soldered the uh, wires. All right, we'll just leave that attached because theoretically it can't short out while it's soldered like that, so. Throwing it everywhere. And funny enough. I don't have to do very much trimming to get this to fit properly. That has some thin gauge wire in it. Well, good thing it's only a GBA. 
Oh, nuts. I'm going to have to pull this thing apart. Because I thought I was even, I thought I was being even more clever. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. There's a mod we have to undo inside of this thing before I can wire up any other batteries to it. I think I'll just hardwire it. Screw these. Okay. Let's pull it apart. Uh, where's my screwdriver? There it is. I've been meaning to reshell this thing too. I'll do that eventually. At that point, I suppose I can put battery terminals back in it. Eh, nah. I'll leave it. Like I said, it's my it's my first modded GBA. Only thing I'm doing, I'm not changing the mods, I'm just making it safe. Er. Still gonna have an internal lithium. But, putting that problem off for another few years, so we'll be good. Alright. So now, oh, and of course that's on top. that going to come out? Mayhaps. All right. <laughs> oh, man, I totally forgot I did this. Oh, this is great. So check out this battery mod. Uh, detects the voltage direct from the battery. Um, I believe it is powered from the power switch and then pulls voltage straight from the battery to, uh, oh yeah, there we go, okay. So we have battery plus, minus, I'm gonna have to figure out how to rewire this thing. But either way, to tap into the battery, I just stabbed a hole in the heat shrink and then soldered a wire right to the back of the diode that is hidden in here. that one out. I think we're good. Oops. No, we're not good. I desoldered that and then put it right back into the... Oh, no. We're good. I'm making stuff up. Alright. Now, realistically, I definitely should have removed it from the shell to do this soldering. Here we are. Actually, let's get some of this extra solder soaked up. that it doesn't threaten to drip onto the screen next time I approach it. I'm just trying to tempt fate here apparently. plan of attack should be to attach this thing in here and I've got heaps of room on account of there being no battery compartment 
Oop. That won't do. Look at everything falling. have wire suitable for this at least not in the proper colors I guess we can use some of this stuff it doesn't I guess it doesn't have to be color coded properly it's not gonna be a long run in fact that is exactly twice as much as I need More thicker is more better. And it makes me feel good, so why not? Looking at how I had this thing wired, I think I had it backwards. But now I'm not sure. That's not supposed to go there. And you can see even the little foam I jammed in there because this ribbon, I think, has a uh, small rip in it. And might as well clean up all that flux. screen is really discolored under this flux. Probably something I should have cleaned up years ago. This thing is unlabeled battery. <sighs> Shoot. Let me double check the wiring on this thing. Okay, I think it's right. I think the labels are just weird. 
so I had to look this up. This, unfortunately, Alex's documentation. This is actually a board from Inside Gadgets. Uh, unfortunately, Alex's documentation is uh, kind of lacking on stuff like this. And um, I, I mean, I guess I don't really blame him. The whole point is, if you know what you're doing, you don't really need the documentation, and if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to have a hard time doing it, so... Sure. Uh, the problem is, I don't remember what I did, and this specific board is something that I made, because the boards I ordered, I didn't know what I was doing, and I ordered the wrong parts for those boards. Holy cow, that is taking a lot of heat. And uh, it was cheaper to literally remake the board and order more boards than it was to um, order the correct parts for the boards I already had. So that's what I did. But, like I said, unfortunately my documentation kind of sucks. Alright. Now, I think I can stick this bad boy back down right onto that inductor and that capacitor right there. Hopefully none of those wires broke off. Doesn't feel like they did. And this wire goes straight to the positive. My goodness, I know why I was getting some weird results. Whoopsie doodle. My battery switch wasn't working. Okay, let's try that again. This I'm going to wire straight to the positive battery terminal. But instead of soldering it to the connector, I'm going to solder it to the resistor right next to the connector because that's just easier. Got some solder on those. I wanted to do it. How did I want to do it? Ah, that's how I want to do it. Okay. Positive. Squeezed it a little bit too tight there. Oops.
and then normally I'd have to uh, well there would be a whole battery compartment to deal with but this console doesn't have a battery compartment some jerk cut it out oh I didn't want to have to put it all the way back together but all the screws are still in there It's also not getting hot. That's a good sign. Ugh. It didn't work when he tested it, so he tried plugging it in and it still doesn't work and he's surprised. First things first. The GBA is not booting because there's no voltage being put out. There's still four volts on the battery. How very interesting. See, now it says the battery's dead, which definitely shouldn't go from 4 volts to 1.6 volts but maybe the battery was dead but it's not charging my meter still works voltage switching is clearly working but the battery is dead hmm This is going to be a tough one to find. Everything there looks good. Everything there looks good. All that looks good. That's not soldered either. Was it this last pin? Whoops. And I better hit this one too, just in case.
that on. Ah, oh, darn. I was hopeful. All right, so if that wasn't it, how many other problems are there? Battery showing good voltage. Till I check that. Oh, there we go. So that's just not a common ground, which means I'm probably going to have to rewire this uh, power module, but whatever. Such is life. The problem, it seems, that's not a good ground. I don't think I understand how this thing is wired at all. Is that a good ground? Can I just jam my probe there and leave it? Yeah. So we have voltage on this thing, which should be switching it on, yes. Which means we have voltage on this thing. Do we have voltage on this side as well? Two volts and falling. We have voltage on that side. So it seems as though my voltage regulator is not kicking on. That pin. It could go either way. I'm not sure if it's soldered. Oh, one of these days, I'll even buy a stencil and do it properly. I'm guessing it wasn't soldered by the fact that I'm having a hard time getting it soldered. straight up having a hard time with this. I think there is yet another copper fill. And all I'm sitting here doing is pumping heat into this battery. Oh, it's not even warm. I'm going to go out on a limb here and assume that wasn't soldered. Because this is ridiculous. It's soldered now. this capacitor and 
And one more try. Mod is switched off. GBA is switched on. Okay. place. Switch it on. Ah! Something else. Man, that's insane. What else can it be? Unless I just cooked one of these components when I had it on the grill for so long. I actually wouldn't be surprised. My battery mod's not working. Who this requires some deep investigation. It's definitely not low. See, that's interesting. Why do I have such a gradient across my grounds? I thought this thing should have a common ground. The way it's going up and down like that makes me think something is switching on, failing, switching off, Hysteresis kicks in, and then it tries switching on again, and then it fails. I gotta figure out what it is. I'll be back. Alright, I believe I have figured it out. And it was kinda, sorta, user error. So there are uh, three different versions of this mod. I have two of them. I was looking at the instructions for the one I don't have. And so I just pulled U1 off this board here because that was the problem. And I may have let the smoke out. Did I? I clean it. Uh oh. The problem in this specific case is that the silk screen marking is backwards. So I had the chip in the correct orientation according to the silk screen. Uh, unfortunately, there are uh, two different parts that can be specced for U1, and I have the one that the silk screen marking is backwards on. I'm just trying to clean it up, it's covered in flux. And now it's covered in Q-tip. All right. The only reason I wanted to clean it was so I could see that marking. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, what are the chances, right? Let's see if that was enough to fix it. Hmm. Great, but it's good enough. I 
least it's an easy enough chip, you know? I don't have to, like, pull this thing apart, get out the hot plate again. Whoops. Well, now I might, because I just messed that up. All right. It's going to be crooked. But I think that'll be all right. All right, now I'm just going to plug it in, and it's just going to work. Because all those other batteries, or those solder joints that I touched up, they were fine. They just looked sketchy. This would have been the only issue. I guarantee it. I'm even going to put the battery cover on. Ah! Wait, I didn't switch it on, did I? No, I didn't. Ah! <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I lost an LED. One, two, three. Ooh, and I lost it on the far side. Which means this thing needs to come apart again. Huh? How you like them apples, though? Now, I bet when I plug it in, I don't get a weird light show, too. Yep. Nice. The whole problem was U1 was backwards, like I said. But what happens when that chip is backwards is that the uh, battery protection circuit kicks in and just disconnects the battery from the entire circuit. Oh, that is really crooked, but it's solid, so so be it. Can't very well go and say this thing's fixed with a light out, can I? These screws are so freaking loose at this point. <laughs> What are the chances it's that loose wire right there? It's going to be this loose wire. Not the first time this happened to me. With this mod even. Thankfully, this is not the annoying one to fix, though. Get out of there. Oh my goodness, I should have disconnected the power. Whoopsie doodle. that too because I hate I hate looking at it there we go we are solid now the only thing to do is to turn it on and leave it on for a while and double check that I have my sense wire connected up properly um, see if the uh, battery discharging affects my lithium battery monitor, which it should, but until I leave it on, we'll never know.
That one is not long for this world. That screw post. Mm -mm. That one's already pretty messed up. Let's try not cross-threading that one, huh? All right, so battery cover still got to come off to charge, uh, and I can fix that, but I won't. Oh, Christ. <laughs> hey. And, you know, it's in there solidly. I'm not worried about it coming out, and even if it does fall out, it's still in there solidly. Plug that in and get charge. And it's pulling half an amp. Charges in both directions. And we will try a type C host. So unplug my phone here. That charges as well. And in both directions. It. First try every time, am I right? Oh my god, it was on that whole time. Heh. How neat is that? Let's see if it even, like, boots a game. Oh, mistakes were made. Seems to work just fine. Excellent. All my buttons are working, as expected. I mean, not that I messed with them. Nothing should have happened, but there we go. I'm set. I'm happy with that. And now, I think I am a little bit more comfortable with this Game Boy, because now it has a hardware battery disconnect that isn't just a plug attached to a diode. Uh, now it has proper load switching so that I can charge it and play it simultaneously. Uh, it has temperature monitoring for the battery. Um, so if it overheats or even gets too cold, it should shut off. Um, at least for the charging. I don't know that it actually does that while playing. Or even just in standby. But at the very least, it won't charge if it gets too toasty. Uh, what else? We have under voltage protection. So many new features. Almost none of them affect playability. Especially since I won't play the Jesus thing. But hey. That's pretty neat. Anyway, I think that's all I've got. I'm going to continue cleaning up some of this leftover flux for the uh, all the parts I ended up resoldering because I didn't think to read the instructions before doing anything else. Um, Otherwise, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.